So if you're able, I'd like you to take your right leg and circle it in a clockwise direction. And then while you're continuing to circle it in a clockwise direction, I want you to take your right hand and write the number six. Okay, it's a little bit dark in here, but I can hear some of you laughing, which is a great thing too. But I'm having a feeling that you're having difficulty doing this. Reason being, the mind is a powerful, powerful tool. The mind has the ability to rewire the body. I'm gonna to touch on this later in my speech, but keep that in mind. I also want you to know the power of the brain as well. Because once I did that trick while speaking to a group of young children, and I had a kid raise their hand, and they said, well, Miss Serena, you can do it. And I was like, really? Okay. And I love the can attitude. I'm going to talk on that too. And he said, yeah, you can do it. I figured out a way. If you write it, maybe an unconventional way, starting at the bottom and looping it up backwards, it's possible. Pretty cool. So, I'm a professional runner with a leg scratch. I once called it a boo-boo, but a kindergartner in my neighborhood said, boo-boos are for babies, call it a leg scratch. <laughs> my leg scratch is the result of two bouts with synovial sarcoma, a rare cancer in the soft tissue. Once in 2010, and then again just several months ago in August. It was something I never expected to experience as a young, healthy mother runner. But that's why I appreciated the challenge from the kindergartner in my neighborhood. When life goes unplanned, sometimes you need to change your perspective, toughen up, and not be a baby. Easier said than done, I know. Pretty much when I was diagnosed the first time, I was like a child who just realized that there's emoji faces in your cell phone, and I went through the full gamut. I was all over the place. But I recovered from that by activating a different kind of mindset. So today, I invite you to open up your mind and your heart to a new way of looking at tough situations by focusing on what you can control and the cans in your life. When I was first told that I had cancer, I let it kind of take over for a few days. And then I realized, you know what, Serena? There are very few things that you can control in life. But something even more powerful of that than that is that the two things you can control in your life is your attitude and your response to situations. It's pretty powerful. Of course, I came about this realization after throwing myself a pity party, and I was kind of thinking a thought that was manifesting itself deep down into my, in my soul. As a professional runner, I finally allowed myself to think the thought of all places for my tumor and my cancer to be growing, why my leg? And the answer came back to me with instant clarity, which doesn't always happen in life. And it was, the fact that the tumor is in your leg has essentially saved your life. Because you are in tune with your legs and they're so important to you as a runner, you paid attention, you went to the doctor, you got it scanned. It was a gift that my cancer was in my leg. My pity party was over. The gift was received, and my attitude was changed. I changed it in everyday life. I generally was, at, even up to that point, a really positive person who lived without regrets and loved deeply and, you know, forgave. But it did challenge me over and over again to just have, having to make the conscious choice to choose positivity. Sometimes that looked like laughing instead of crying, like when my husband and I were, were talking soon after my initial diagnosis, and he said in his best Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, it's not a tumor, because we so desperately wished it wasn't. Or this time around, when it was a little bit new and raw, and he said, you know, the lottery is up really high, and you were just diagnosed for the second time with a rare cancer. You're a lucky person. You should go buy your ticket. But I chose to be in control of my life and my perspective. This time around, when I went into my doctor with a new lump in my leg, he was the one asking why. 
when he confirmed with 99% certainty that the cancer was indeed back. He just kept saying, Serene, I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's back. Seven years ago, we took out the tumor. We took out a large portion of your biceps femoris muscle, which is a hamstring in your leg. I don't, I don't know why this is back. I mean, I'm just so, so sorry. And me using the tools that I've been equipped with the first time around with cancer, I sat there pretty content and at peace. And, and then he looked at me, and he really looked at me and took in the whole aura, and he said, Serena, you're handling this news really well. And I said, doctor, you gave me seven years to um, pursue running that I didn't think I would have seven years ago. You know, I don't know why I got cancer in the first place. I don't know why it's back again. You deal with cancer every day, all day long. We're not in control of that cancer, but you know what? We can decide where we go from here. Let's make a treatment plan. What does your schedule look like in terms of when I can schedule surgery to have this new tumor out? So a week later, I was in surgery, and the nurse came in and she said, do you have any requests? And I said, well, I'd like to be able to get, have someone help me get up and not use the bedpan. That was one. And the second one was surround me with positivity. Because that's what they were going to get from me. When we describe someone as a valiant fighter, it's really about their attitude, isn't it? It's not so much about their battle, but their attitude. Focus on what you can control. And that was me several days after surgery. Or actually, a couple hours after surgery. My second point that I want you to hear today is to focus on the cans in your life. For me, I say it's going hand in hand with the one before because I call it taking control of the can in cancer. When you're faced with something you didn't expect or really tough times, you can surround yourself with an amazing support system. Sometimes it's people you've known your whole life. Sometimes it's someone you've just met. Sometimes it's just telling your story or sharing your struggle and having a whole community support you. For me, a person that was incredibly instrumental with keeping me positive and helping me through um, my cancer diagnosis both times was my coach. And he continued to coach me using interchangeable running and life lessons. Another person was my doctor. He kept the door open for hope, telling me stories of survival and people overcoming the odds. Together, the three of us actually talked about different things and we established three goals. And the goals were, one, save my life, because if that didn't happen, we really didn't need to make any other goals. Two, save my leg. And honestly, three, anything else after that is total bonus. And of course, you know, we gear up for the things, like I was thinking surgery was going to be like the big thing my first time around, you know? So we gear up and we stay strong through that. But changing and controlling your attitude is always a work in progress. So when I went back to my doctor for a follow-up visit following my first surgery, I remember telling him, doctor, I still can't. And he cut me off with a smirk and he said, get out of here, we're done. And I realized at that moment that I had already exceeded his expectations for where I would be post-surgery. And I also realized something even more important. If I was going to reach my full potential, I would need to banish the contraction can't from my vocabulary. It's still something that I try and do today. In my house, it's a rule. You can't say the word can't, which has backfired several times because now I have an eight-year-old son, and he'll say, Mommy, you just said can't in response to him saying, can we please go visit some far-off country to pet an exotic animal in the next five minutes? But I've built this idea of can in my house and for my son and for people around me. And he's gotten it. In fact, this time around, he was probably my biggest cheerleader for my recovery. It was hard. The first time, he was only one, so he didn't really know what was going on. But this time, to have me sidelined was tough for him. But he's still focused on the cans. We're competitive in my household. Obviously, me as a competitive runner, we're pretty competitive. And so he would say, OK, Mommy. I think 
You can make it up the stairs if I give you a 20 second head start from me. You can hobble up and then we can, can be close at the finish line. So he'd say go and one, two, and I'd be hobbling up the steps, you know. Probably a dangerous thing to do. Maybe I shouldn't recommend doing something like that. Um, but, but he kept it positive and we focused on the cans and we were able to continue to, to make things better. And the things about can is, it doesn't mean you're content with where you are or lose sight of where you want to go. It just means that you're living in the moment, being the best version of you at that point in time. By opening myself up to the cans in life, I also allowed my body no preconceived expectations or limits. And by doing this, I really allowed it to defy science. I was evaluated soon after my first surgery by my physical therapist, and you know he was doing the regular things they do, checking range of motion, strength, just kind of getting a baseline of where I was. And then we were reading the surgical notes provided by my doctor, and he's like, you know, Serena, judging by what you can do, your doctor forgot to, to write in the surgical notes that he reattached this part of your hamstring. And then several days later, I went into physical therapy, and he said, I talked to your surgeon. It wasn't a mistake. That part of your hamstring is gone. Having a positive mindset allowed my body to rewire itself. Little by little, one step at a time, just focusing on where I was at that moment, I was actually able to return to running. And several months later, my coach and I realized that I had been given another gift to return to competitive running. We didn't know how far I could go with it, but we were willing to, to take that journey and see where it led. I can now say that my leg scratch and I have run 12 competitive marathons. Those of you that are marathoners in this room, I've run two hours, 26 minutes, and 53 seconds. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a snail pace. <laughs> And I've had the opportunity to represent the United States in two world championships. One this past August with actually the tumor still in my leg. This is life, guys. It doesn't always go as planned. We get knocked down, we get, we get back up. So I've had a pretty awesome journey. Um, I can also say that I have started running post second surgery, so that's pretty exciting too. I was once asked in an interview, if I thought having cancer was a blessing in disguise? That's a tough question. I didn't have an answer for it then, and I don't have an answer for it still today. But I know better than to rule out the possibility of having an answer someday. The truth of the matter is, we all have a cancer. We will all face something in our lives that will stop us in our track and threaten to take control. How will you respond? If a chunk of my hamstring can go missing and become merely a leg scratch, and a positive mindset can free me from my circumstances, anything is possible. Focus on what you can control and the cans in your life. I know you guys have it in you. Thank you.